Welcome to my first Let's Play series ever. This is going to be a Wrath of Sparta campaign where I am Corinthos because it was a landslide for the people who wanted to see me play as Corinthos and I'm quite happy with that uh, choice by you because Sparta, to be honest, I'm kind of fed up with Sparta. There's just too much Sparta all around. Uh, the Boeotian League, Boeotian League, um, is an interesting faction. It has an interesting starting position, but uh, I think Air of Carthage was going to play as the Boeotian League, and also they have a pretty crappy faction symbol. Athens, uh, not really a huge fan of Athens. Athens starts out with a lot of territory all across the map, and Athens has. I've played Athens a lot in multiplayer, uh, not in campaign, but in multiplayer, and I think Athena would have been far less in less interesting than Corinthos, and for several reasons. Corinthos is the place where the Greek philosopher uh, Diogenes had his um, had his uh, works, and Diogenes was a bit of a special character in that he was very critical, very cynical of the other. Greek philosophers. Uh, he is famous for allegedly telling Alexander the Great to get out of his son. So he was lying uh, at the riverbank and getting uh, his tan on, uh, presumably naked, when Alexander the Great came and uh, and Diogenes basically told him to get out of his shade. And Alexander is reported to have said that if I were not Alexander, I would have been Diogenes. And Diogenes he went around with a lamp in broad daylight and and lifted this lamp to the face of faces of um, men walking by and he was looking for an honest man which he did not find Diogenes did not believe in material goods so he lived in what most people would consider squalor and was an unsavory character but his legend and his story and his teachings has had quite a lot of um, impact up until even modern days where where the Diogenes uh, syndrome is is um, something that's seen in elderly people who start hoarding and neglecting themselves but anyway that was just uh, something I think is quite interesting about Corinthos Corinthos is also famous for the Corinthian helmet the badass uh, hoplite helmet that you see on the uh, faction insignia so I'll just read what it uh, says here in the game of Corinthos. Unified under an oligarchical system of government, Corinthos has become rich from trade due to its ge geographical position. Using the wealth to launch public construction projects on a large scale and forge colonies as far afield as Sicily. Following the period of tyranny, it allied with Sparta, fighting to rebel the Persian invasions as part of the Hellenic League. Although Corinthos supported the Athenians during the Greco-Persian Wars, Athena is backing of the rebel colony of Corcyra in its struggle against Corinthian rule has caused hostilities to break out between the two great cities. A naval confrontation is sure to ensue, so Corinthos will need a strong fleet if it is to deny Athenian naval supremacy. supremacy. Yet Corinthos' sizable citizen army also makes it a dangerous proposition on land, and far more than a mere, than a mere foil to the expected Spartan battlefield supremacy. The starting positions are divided for Corinthos, which is interesting. The faction effects are the love of Aphrodite, plus 2 growth in all regions, which can be very useful. The maritime heritage, plus 10 shift battle speed, that is also interesting. We'll have to test that out in some naval battles. And then we are in the shadow of Athens, which means that we have minus 10 to all manufacturing income in all regions. I'm going to play this on with a 40 minute battle time limit just in case something weird happens with the AI and they're not able to win so that I'm I'm not stuck in endless games. The advisor is off, I don't want to see what the AI is doing and um, that's it, let's start the campaign. Corinthian outrage to lead us to 
across the Aegean, and our people will suffer. If the Corinthians want war, they should seek it alone. You would see all of Greece under the heel of Athenae, cowering from them like chided slaves. We spilled blood at Potidaea, but now we need allies. The might of Sparta will halt their ambition. Your flattery is wasted. You know not what you ask. All eyes look on Sparta, and this is what you would have them see. From birth, a Spartan is trained for one purpose. To do battle. You are Pandora, clutching at a vessel you do not understand. They dare think themselves your equal. None can match your skill. It is every Spartan's duty to embody the very nature of war. Strike now, I beg you. You would plunge Greece into chaos. Then from chaos, we will rise. Okay, so that was decidedly 300 inspired. I'm sure the Spartan fans will <laughs> like that intro. Since our great victories over the Persians. It should have been the start of our golden age. But instead, we squabble amongst ourselves. The Hellenic League, formed to take the fight to the invaders, did not last. Suspicious of the ambitions of Athena, Sparta and many other great city-states left. They were right to be suspicious. Athena has turned the League they formed into an empire under their control. It is now less a collection of independent cities and more a series of bases for their powerful navy. In the face of Athenian hegemony, Sparta has reformed the Peloponnesian League with Corinthus and the smaller Boeotian League of Cities. As these two powerful groups face off against each other, war is brewing. Let us not forget the Persians. Their empire still stands and keeps a careful eye on developments in Greece to make sure that no single group becomes too powerful. Athena's navy may be great, but the engineers of Corinthos invented the trireme warships that make up the fleet. As its colonies are scattered across Greece, there is much for Corinthos to defend. Olynthos is in need of protection, and the rebellious Corkyra must be secured. Once Athena is weakened, it is Corinthos that is ideally placed to take over its many island holdings. When the sea is controlled, Corinthos can reveal itself as the true power in Greece. The founder of so many other cities will become the greatest of all. Alright, so I got an objective control for provinces. Now let's have a look at the map first. This is a pretty large Greek map we have here. Uh, many small factions. We have, the, we have Macedonia uh, for Macedon. It looks like uh, Athena has a lot of settlements all around. I am divided. I have Corinthos. I have... Over here I have... Uh, Olynthos and... Anactorio... And Pronio... Pronoi... Pronoi... There we're getting a small tooltip about the <laughs> different... Uh, different uh, places don't really care much for that and let's have a look at the diplomacy to see where our standings are with the Aetolian League uh, they approve of the treaties I have with the Boetolian League so I'm going to try to start Greetings. trading at once folk. with as many factions as possible My the Achaean League I'm going to try Be to welcome. trade with you as well but may Athena strike us all they did not like that. I'll just try once more for the hell of it. They demand 300 and I'm going to allow that. I wonder if that, that um, some was intentional, but it's ni always nice to have allies early on. Uh, Argos, down there by Sparta. Let's see if they are interested in trading. They are. So ideally I would like to have a lot of non-aggression pacts because I am so divided to begin with. I want to have... Um, I want to have as many non-aggression pacts as possible with these smaller 
with the smaller uh, states. We're going to try to trade with the Boitoyan League and they agreed to it. We have a military alliance, trade agreement and military access. So I'm going to be able to move through this territory, which is nice. Peros, let's see if they want be to be friends welcome. and trade a bit. If I can give you a Not interested. Let's My see if they want the non-aggression pact. Peros no were still I assholes in 400 BC. And will listen with interest to all I want to trade with Macedon, but Macedon does not want to trade with I me. Trade nope, let's wait and see we if we see can improve their relations people, with Macedon. We have a cultural aversion so of minus 10. Maybe that will change when I get some more resources that I can spend towards diplomacy. So get got some nice trade agreements going there. And since I am so divided, I have Ambrakia, the entire province of, province of Ambrakia. And Ambrakia is over here. So let's see what we have in Ambrakia. We have uh, consecrated ground, uh, regular shrine. I don't have a lot of food, so I don't want to upgrade that just yet. My public order is in the negative, but it's nothing worrying because it's going to take quite some time until the public order becomes a problem. In Pronioi, we have, let's see, that's the island over here. Uh, we can expand there. And since I need food, I'm going to get a homestead in Pronioi. So we have the option to go for a harbor, and it's going to increase the squalor. Uh, you can increase the settlement, the trench mine. I'm going to have a penalty on um, industry due to me being Corinthos. So I'm going to wait a bit on that. Tooltip on Ambrakia. I kind of want to go and mess with Aperius just because they were assholes in the diplomacy, but it's probably a good idea to build up my forces a bit first. I have a pretty nice income already, I think. Uh, these two settlements look like good choices to go up against because there are so many Athenian settlements over here. If I can just if I can just uh, secure these two, then I should be in a pretty good spot over here in Olynthos. So, yeah, I want to take Torone and Mende first. I'll go for Mende first because Mende is far away from the other Athenian holdings. My general is a Pictoplite. Let's see which other generals that I can recruit here. Um, okay. Uh, let's see what general he can have. Oh, only Pictoplite. Okay, so I'm not going to do that. Uh, have a look at the politics. Uh, see how I... See how I... Um, stand there. I am the Conservative Party and there are four parties, the Conservative Party, the Autocratic Party, the Populist Party and the Tyrannic Party. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, this is my faction leader, he's a good ambusher, that's kind of useless. Uh, that could be nice when I'm uh, occupying territory that he has minus 10 resistance to foreign occupations. I can secure a promotion for him already. Uh, which is going to make him an Agoranomus. And I'm going to secure that promotion. Uh, Krokinas has unfortunate parentage, uh, which is going to give him minus two authority, but it's going to give plus six public order if I have a bread and games edict, so that's nice. I'm going to, uh, to promote him as well. And this is Lamprocles. Lamprocles, yep. I need to build up my forces before I take aggressive action against Athenae, obviously. Um, I don't think I need this navy to stay here. I want to take out Nopactos. Uh, I'm all good with these, uh, with Sparta and the smaller, smaller city-states down here. So Nopactos points itself out as a nice target for my armies, but I still need to keep some forces down here I think because of uh, because Athena itself is so close um, let's just see what they have in their forces over here I have medium melee ship uh, Corinthos Trieres and uh, not a big 
navy that I have here. So it might be a better idea to keep it in Corinthos for the time being. Uh, the the dignitary can Corinthos has very nice income, and let's have a look at the effects of that my noble has. He has cultural influence and uh, minus four upkeep for military units. I'll just uh, start administrating straight away with him. Uh, let's see if I have any other. Uh, that's the that's another factions. Uh, we have a general over here. We have an admiral over here, and I don't think I have other agents than that. So looking at this map where Athena is, I want to take out uh, Elis, I want to take out Aetolia, I want to keep Corinthos strong of course and protect from uh, incursions from Athena itself. I think I'm pretty good with the different uh, diplomatic standings that I have and over here as well if I'm able to take out these two fingers then I, I need to be careful about Amphipolis. Uh, and naval invasions from Myrina uh, but yeah we'll, we'll start uh, we'll, we'll start over here to build up our forces move close to the border and let's see which forces we can recruit javelin men very cheap uh, not great units but I think they can be useful in firing at the rear of enemy units the light cavalry yeah I need light cavalry for go to go for rear charges I need uh, I don't really need a lot of infantry I think I think I should be able to kite well with my uh, with my um and it's going to take two turns to recruit these even these javelin men is going to take two turns it looks like I can recruit three units at once so I'll recruit one militia of retain two javelin men down there then I will recruit some forces down here in Corinthos itself. I have some hoplites and some cavalry already. I want some archers for long range fire support. Three archers. Mm, I'm tempted to disband these units but it would probably be a better idea to... because they are expensive units. I'm, I'm tempted to go and attack Poseidon's Chosen with this navy. Uh, I have another navy down here. Athena has a uh, navy over here. The friends of the Nerids. So maybe it would be a good idea to move this guy away from Ambrakia down to Anactorio. Yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to move him down here. Recruit some more. Uh, recruit some javelins and some cavalry. Always nice to have cavalry. And then I can merge these two fleets down at Nopactos. Because then I don't need to defend Anactorio. Uh, this Athenian navy isn't going to be able to reach Anactorio anyway. So, okay, we will go down here first. Wait a bit with this navy so it isn't... Uh, isn't attacked by a superior navy while uh, my other navy makes its way down. And I don't think I can do much more. I can start looking at the technologies available. So I can get the citizen conscription, uh, Holoceratus barracks. Then I can go for uh, the gymnasia that's going to allow me to recruit champions. That can be useful. Uh, two wealth from learning or culture. That can be epistemic epistemology could be useful then we have geometry going for fountains and other public order places uh, in philosophy philosophy looks quite nice uh, tax rate and wealth and then we have aesthetics tariff income from trade so that could be very useful for me since I have a lot of uh, decent trade agreements and drama plus five diplomacy with all factions that is actually a pretty nice thing to have so the tech tree is obviously different now um, not entirely sure what I should go for first here uh, I think I should be able to do well with even the low tier units that I already have so something that would increase my 
something that would increase my economy so I'm going to go for epistemology to begin with and the tax rate is fine at this point I think I don't have any worrying public order problems uh, just building up the armies over here in in Olynthos and in the center of the map in Corinthos and yep that looks good looks good to me we'll end the turn uh, I can oh I can issue an edict okay so because I have uh, because I have the uh, province over here so let's have a look at the edicts uh, I don't make a lot of money in these provinces so I'm not sure that a tax edict is the best way to go about it uh, noble philanthropy unit recruitment costs I am recruiting some units here so minus 15 for but that's going to take effect the next turn so it doesn't really help me this turn uh, then we have commercial stimulation uh, food plus 10 public order because of the character so to get up the happiness of the population I'm going to go for the bread and games here because I need food and I need some public order over here just save before I uh, end the turn in case something happens and that's it so in the beginning there I'm sure there will be a lot of uh, administrative things the perils of hegemony war dictates that unnatural allies fight together and that drastic measures are taken to defeat a common ev enemy however the Greek world does not look kindly upon expansionism the capture of the capital cities, Athenae, Thebae, Corinthos and Sparta will cause severe diplomatic penalties. Okay, so I'll hold out on taking Athenae for a while. Instead aim to erode enemy influences by striking at their smaller possessions. Recapturing your own capital will not incur, incur a penalty. Okay, but I think don't think I'll be strong enough to take Athenae for quite some time uh, yet. It looks like this fleet might be moving uh, after me here. So I'll just try to run away for a bit and I don't know if this fleet is able to take on. I don't like the chances of this fleet against this fleet. I have more units but the that fleet might be stronger than mine. Let's see if I have some mercenaries available for recruitment. Mercenary Thrake Peltas. Thrake, Thrake Peltas. Very expensive. I'm de I'll definitely go for some Cretan archers and Rodian slingers later. But at this point, uh, it's just too expensive. I'm going to recruit more of my levy troops. That should... It's probably a better idea to have a lot of uh, cheap troops early on. Mm, let's see if I can go for some buildings. If I upgrade to... Um, okay, so this is where I have the entire province. And I can afford the hit in food now. So I'm going to... Upgrade Anactorio. Uh, looks like Anactorio is quite safe. So, yep, upgrading Anactorio to get some more money, and that's all I can do basically. I am tempted. Well, it's probably a good idea to have the garrison there. Um, I have the amphith Amphitheatron. Um, I'm going to have to wait to get more troops down here in Corinthos. I uh, might as well just start recruiting them straight away. So now I have three archers, two javelins, uh, some hoplites. Always nice to have hoplites, but they were very expensive uh, units. So maybe if I, I can recruit two hoplites, maybe I should just... Well, I do need my troops up here as well, because this is where I'll go for Mende and the small enemy settlements. Hmm... It's probably a better idea to have some more troops up here, but I'll take I'll go down here and I'll take a look at what uh, what um, the garrison consists of. I have the ability to recruit a spy, but it's too expensive for me at the moment. Uh, and Olynthos is not happy, but it should be happier when I capture these settlements and start getting some public order buildings up. Let's have a look at the diplomacy, if I can get more trade agreements going. Uh, I really want to start trading I with Epeirus. Epeirus does not like me you would not because, much in our because of the culture of, uh, cultural aversion. So it might be better when be I have the diplomacy research done. Macedon still doesn't like me. The Thessalian League might be a 
problem, but they are kind of sandwiched in between some of my my allies the allies there. Rhodos, I am at war with Rhodos. Uh, they are far away. The Persian Empire does not not like me, of course. Corcyria, uh, where's Corcyria? Corcyria, all the way over there. Okay, so might be a good good um, faction to take some holdings from. But I do want to take out these two settlements first because they are so close to me, and because Olympos is sandwiched in between. Can you not see? Um, yeah, Together sure. The Aetolian League. I will. Uh, will accept the non-aggression pact. I don't want to have too many enemies early. I did research epistemology. It's summer. My noble increased in rank, and I am going to start researching. Classical art and then yeah classical art and then drama is going to be my research for the time being I Really want some more there. We have Agamemnon's pride. I'm going to put my Army inside of the settlement uh, The agrarian X-Men were pretty cheap uh, very good morale here um, I think they would be a very good unit to have the mercenary Crete notchers are a must uh, later on I think but they're just so expensive with the upkeep and the Ionian Hippeus look pretty decent still very very expensive units so let's buy the Agrianian Axemen to begin with and then buy some cheap light cavalry three cavalry over here uh, that should I should be able to defend against Agamemnon's pride that way I don't think I can reach Agamemnon's pride and ambush them, uh, or can I? Can I? Maybe I can. No, it doesn't look. It looks like I'm just out of range, so I don't want to risk that and end up in a dangerous position. I can't really see what uh, the what Agamemnon's pride consists of, and I do want the cavalry to be able to run down the skirmishers, so I don't take too much fire on my important units. So I'm going to wait that one out. Keep moving up with my fleet down here. Uh, try to maybe I have to attack the enemy settlement there in order to be able to or at least uh, besiege the port we'll see I can now I four hopita should be more than enough um, I would rather have some extra light I really like the archers so I'm going to go for archers and more cavalry down here now I quite like uh, the army the mm, this is potentially bad for Pronoi it's quite a, quite a decent fleet that they have there, but we'll see. Anactorio is uh, doing fine. I don't know if I need I. I don't think I need that army to be down there. I'm going to send it down here to take this uh, to take Nopactos instead. And now I am trespassing with the Aetolian League, so bit of a mistake there we'll see how much the Italian League hated me for that we're still on yeah we're on great terms so it doesn't really matter too much mm, I Greetings, will friend. let's Greetings. see if we can get military ac military wine? access I should Fine have done olives, that before or agreeable talk. but yeah we did manage to get that we so Greeks we shouldn't um, moving through their territory in the coming turns should not pose a problem for us just need to defend over here and then continue building up our forces it's going to take a long time for the Hippeus to be ready uh, yep I very much would like some Agrianian Axemen thank you and we should see a battle in the next few turns Aristeos has some skills so Let's level him up. Uh, I'm going to... Uh, provocateur could be nice. He has military administration minus 5 upkeep. So if I if I give a uh, tournament to Provocateur and then 
put them in this army I should be able to make some more money from cheaper upkeep and um, um, should also be able to give authority to my general minus 20 upkeep that's very nice for my main army and also plus 10 melee defense because that's th their mustering mm, okay so so now he will be able to move a bit further I don't want to go for Athena early on obviously but it could allow me to go for the other settlements near Athena to is try to isolate Athena a bit Celebration of Salamis, and what happens at the Celebration of Salamis? Plus four public order, okay, that's nice. Now, I don't know where the Athenian army went here. Maybe it... Maybe it... Um, it went back where to from where it came. Uh, we're all good because I have military access. And now I should be able to... So expensive, that cavalry. I'm not going to purchase it. Mm, but I'm going to start to... Okay, so they have... Okay, not, not a worrying army there. Just going to blockade and run away if... Um, run away if this... Actually, I'm going to try to attack this this fleet if I can get in range no I can't okay and this army is starting to look formidable this army needs some more cavalry before it's formidable and see if we can promote anyone no we can't um, I have my faction is gaining political power Sakintos. I will consider taking Sakintos later on. I want to upgrade buildings in safe provinces. I have a decent amount of food, but nothing great. So storage pits is good, increasing uh, increasing wealth and increasing food. The minus one public order from the herding grounds is not really a problem now because I have uh, have the bread and games edict in effect. And it's going to give me more wealth, so herding grounds it is. The Greeks love their goats. Mm, yep, we'll go down here and take the settlement in the next turn, I think. I think we have the... We don't have very good infantry, but I think... Uh, I think Corinthos has the skirmishers to do it. And this naval battle looks interesting. There are some... Orchard Marines. Um, mm, it does not look like a good engagement for me, so we I'm going to return. withdraw. Try to move out of the range of the city. Drop anchor. This senseless war can end today. Korkira wants a peace treaty. Uh, they're going to pay me three thirty, so wish. I'm going to accept that because because um, I wouldn't have been been attacking them for quite some time it's fine I we can have a peace treaty and now I can send in my fleet from two sides and that should be able to do a lot better if I can reinforce and attack with my uh, attack with my infantry army at the same time my land-based army so I'll try that I will encircle Quite a lot of forces there. Um, we take this settlement. But if I'm able to isolate the navy, maybe. Battle. Yeah, this looks this looks pretty good for me. So if I can destroy the navy, it should make the it should make the siege a bit easier due to them not having support. I haven't played a lot of naval battles, so this might go horribly wrong. The ships look the same. I don't want rain. I want. Um, I don't want fog. I just want dry weather. There we are, dry weather. And I'll deploy a bit back since I have support incoming. 
and it looks like my support is coming in behind the enemy lines so deploying far back was definitely a mistake I'll just go and attack right away actually I'll pull back a bit because oh there are there's an enemy fleet coming behind me here so I'm going to start shooting at the Athena Trieres and naval battles are very messy it looks like this is going to be no exception just try to kite away with the ships while I'm attacking his uh, archer marines with my melee ships so doing some damage here and I don't know how many oh wow okay that was effective that was uh, seems like there's been some upgrades to the naval combat Oh, shit, 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 shit. Okay, but that means I can flank. I can flank that ship while it's engaging my guys. That's useful. They are attacking my boats over here. Uh, naval battles are just so extremely ma messy. Um, but it looks like I am getting the better of these engagements. I think I am at least. So they are not attacking. I wanted to sort of uh, ram that ship. And these guys are just not being able to ram. Come on. There we are. Get rammed. Naval engagements. Wow. Okay, so try ramming that ship from the front there we are um, try ramming this ship getting some nice shots off just need to keep clicking them so that they I think that was one of my ships going down actually and um, that ship should go down now nope it was a Trieres and that is Okay, so let's attack here. Let's board them. Okay, wavering. One more hit and this ship should be gone. Yes. So overall, not a, not a horrible battle for me. Quite, uh, quite good. You can just fast forward now. I think getting stuck on some wreckage my general and shouldn't that yeah they're shattered so this ship should also shatter a messy naval engagement <laughs> it's just shattering sideways across the across the ocean Come on, ram. Yes. How do you like that for Athenian naval supremacy? Yay. So, not a great naval battle from me by any means, but at least I won. So now I can move in with my own ships to support in the siege, which is pretty great. And... I'll just kill the captives. I don't want to deal with slaves. Uh, I managed to lose... Uh, managed to lose one of my admirals. I'll just pick that guy. And... Blockade. I'll just merge these navies. And uh, now we should be in a very good position to attack. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I don't like his archers, but I should be able to get them with my cavalry. And since there was a lot of planning and administration going on, I think this will be... I will do this battle and then that will be it for the first episode of this Let's Play series. So 
the video doesn't become too long I want to stay around 20 minutes but I won't be very strict uh, in enforcing that I will if it if it it's longer it's longer if it's shorter it's shorter but I will of course also uh, listen to what you have to say about how the if you would like to see shorter or longer shorter or longer videos because I haven't done any let's play videos before so using Militia Oplates as as uh, missile bait, I'm going to try to move my cavalry up. I don't think the enemy had any cavalry, so I can use my skirmishers like I want. I have my. Uh, I'm, qu I'm quite uh, interested to see how the cavalry works now because I haven't tried it myself. They have the spears and the javelins, and they also that they throw the javelins when they charge, like precursor javelins, and then they. Then they use swords in melee, so I'll just try to throw the javelins on the militia operators, get a nice charge on them, see how they do. Charging in with spears. Not doing an amazing amount of damage to the operators, but at least stopping them for a little while. Yeah, I lost a few cavalry there, but he stopped his archers, so... Maybe I'll be able to get at some archers. My picked Oplites should go up against the Militia Oplites. And now I can just ride down the archers. Before the archers are able to get at my skirmishers. I don't want to waste any javelins on the, uh, on the uh, Militia Oplites. Archers getting sandwiched, nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. So my Militia Hoplites got there first, I'm going to send in my Militia Hoplites against this Militia Hoplites. Then my General is going to support the fight. First Archer unit down, but my, my Light Cavalry is taking fire, so I have to get them out of there. Not getting a great charge against this Militia Hoplites, actually I'm going to just surround them and go for a rear charge with my Cavalry. Should break the Militia Hoplites pretty quickly. Move my skirmishers around here. And rear charge incoming. They're still confident. But they shouldn't be for much longer. Steady. And that's the archers. But I'm actually going to take my light cavalry run down the archers for the experience. Use the general for rear charging instead. We have some standard hoplites there. I'm sure I can. Oh, I'm under missile fire, so I have to pull ba pull back. Send my militia hoplites over here, and I won't use my cavalry much now. I just wanted to see how sturdy they were, but they weren't very sturdy at all. Only ten armor. So I can bait some arrows with my militia hoplites in a spaghetti line over here. Take down the militia operators, go around here with the cavalry. The ships are incoming, but I don't think they will arrive in time to make a meaningful contribution to the battlefield. Move the militia operators up there, under archer fire. That's fine. Yeah, the militia operators broke. Looks like I'm going to get charged here by Hoplites. I'm going to send the Agrianian Axeman up to fire into the flanks of the incoming Militia Hoplites. So that's going to be into the unshielded side, so it should be effective. Just keep kiting and engage them frontally with my general. To give my general some experience. I don't really need to waste missiles. I want to use the missiles on the archers instead. But now I'm going to change my mind because I can go for some nice flanking shots on the militia operators. And I'm going to send in my general now. Push back the archers. Move up here. And we have an archer unit here. So I'm going to charge that with my... Guys, 
Looks like things might get a bit hairy for my general there, so I'm going to put him in Phalanx. Hoplites against Hoplites. I should do well because I have missile support. Riding down some more archers. Very glad that I brought the cavalry. Now I'll be able to take down the javelin men and the archers quickly. I just have to make sure that they aren't able to get any good shots off on my guys. Yep, it looks like they're going to take down the archers very effectively. Turn around and take out the javelin men as well. My my uh, picked hoplites are going to do well. But I need to be careful about these archers because these archers are doing a lot of damage to my men. Should be able to break those units with my cavalry. And yeah, I'll use the these skirmishers to take care of the enemy archers. Charge the archers with the cavalry. The cavalry is on the verge of breaking, actually. So, but these two units should be able to survive. They were up against javelin men, not archers. And I don't want to use them for a rear charge over here because I am a bit worried that uh, I'm going to lose this cavalry unit. Yeah, they could get stuck here in the, that engagement, so I don't want to use them anymore in this battle. The Hoplites, oh, those are only militia Hoplites, so they are doing terrible against the normal Hoplites. I'll just disengage and kite. General is doing well. So kite away, kite away. By your command, your orders, your orders, understood. General! Ooh, getting a lot of kills with the general. Yes, commander. The enemy general is only a Hoplite unit. I can still use the cavalry to chase down routing enemy units. I lost the militia Hoplites, but it allowed me to kite a bit with my missiles. I'll move my other missiles up here to start kiting there. There are my Hoplites. So, charge them in. Get some more experience on my cavalry. Very nice kills on the light cavalry, actually. Now the javelins are going to pepper the Hoplites from all sides. Only the Hoplite unit left for the enemy. The militia Hoplite shattered and my general should be able to defeat the Hoplites while the skirmishers are doing their thing against the these Hoplites. They're going to go down quickly. I'll charge in the Agrianian Axemen when they are out of missiles, which is now. Let's see how they do. Getting a nice charge. Very nice charge by the Agrarian X-Men. But I don't think they will be able to do that well against the Hoplites, to be honest. Well, actually, they are killing a lot of Hoplites here. So if I can move the skirmishers around the, around and get some shots into the rear of the Hoplites, they should go down very quickly. There we are. Wavering. And this should be the end of that. Nice kills on the Agrarian X-Men. The enemy general is wavering. I'll just give him a quick rear charge to finish him off. Get some experience on my cavalry. I'll continue because I want to run down the enemy units. I'll just fast forward when I run down these remaining Hoplites. There, they got their first chevron. Congratulations. So now I can end the battle. Um, decisive victory. Thank you very much. Uh, pretty happy with how the cavalry did there. Everything did well. Was able to neutralize the archers fairly easily. 
cookies to the face and we'll just occupy um, did I lose a general there because that didn't really make a lot of sense the general's unit had a lot of men left but maybe I did lose <laughs> the general oh well yeah I actually did lose my general I did not expect that at all let's see if that affected the balance of power in any way yeah I lost my I lost my uh, public order general there but that's fine I don't I hadn't grown attached to him just yet I want to keep this I want to keep uh, an army in Corinthos and just build it up to be able to to defeat strong Athenian armies so another light cavalry unit uh, two more hoplites I have a lot of archers here one more light cavalry unit and this army should do very well against whatever Athena I can send against me oh, I will hmm I would have liked to have some archers up here and um, since I do have a lot of funds it's really tempting to go for two mercenary Rodian slingers just because they are so extremely good mm, they cost 355 so if I take away one of the if I take away one of the uh, light cavalry units down here I can afford an additional unit of of uh, Rodian slingers and um, with a unit of Rodian slingers I am a lot more confident that I'll be able to push down here and go for Mende we'll have a look at what we can see so this is going to be the last battle probably yeah I can take on Mende no problem <laughs> poor Mende We'll take Mende as well, so we're getting another battle. This is going to be a massacre. General. Starting up on a nice hill. I'll just do it the lazy way. Fast forward and... <laughs> Why are you running away? Are you afraid of something? Afraid of some uh, Rodians, perhaps? Oh yeah. When these Rodians start getting chevrons, they will be absolutely terrifying. Shoot at the... I'll shoot at the javelin man before I engage the hoplites. Wow. That is devastating stuff. <laughs> Just destroying this unit of militia hoplites. The javelin men are more annoying, so I'll start firing at them instead. Pull away, pull away, pull away. Did he have archer units? No, it's just javelin men. Okay. So, time for some kiting so I don't lose too many Rodians. Create a nice blob here. Just pour the fire into him. Take out the javelins. <laughs> Very nice formation there by my militia of the days. While the Rodians are... Oh, he has archers. Okay. So I need to take out the archers. They Oh, they were the marines that came in from the sea. Not anymore, though. The Rodians already have chevrons on them. Let's try to give them some more. And I'm doing a lot of friendly fire to my militia of the but I'm not really bothered because they are such cheap units and they're going to replenish fast. I do want to give my uh, missiles the opportunity to get some more veteran C. So I'm going to keep firing. They now have 9 shots per minute, so these guys are going to be absolutely devastating very nice okay so we managed to take two settlements 218 and 213 
Wow. So that's Mende down. The general increased in rank, so let's see what we can give the general here. He has morale and minus 10 religious cost and student of philosophy. Mm, I quite like the plus 5 ammunition for all units, that's nice for the strategist. Uh, a fighter is also good. I like the seal because it's going to give his general's bodyguard more damage and we picked off the taste. Yeah, I'm going to go for the fighter general. Save the game. And I'll just do a named save as well, to be sure. So, started off quite nicely here. We have a nice economy, some nice armies coming up. Managed to take two settlements away from Athens. Uh, I think we're in a pretty good spot to do some some decent expansion with, uh, with this campaign. I'll hold off on taking Athena for a while. Ideally... Uh, Athena is going to go up against Thebae at some point, or Thebes. And I just have to do one more thing before I start this, uh, before I stop this, um, this episode. I'm going to name this army the Sacri... How is that spelled? Sacrilegious Band. So, if that's a typo, I'll change it in the next installment, but this is the sacrilegious band, not the sacred band. So anyway, that's the first episode of the Let's Play. Let me know what you think about it in the comments, because I haven't really done this before, so <laughs> I don't know if this is an entertaining ex experience for you to watch. There we have a big whale going up and down. That's a whale the size of a city. A Moby Dick. Mo Mo Moby Dickus. Mobus Dickus. So yeah, uh, tell me what you would like to see more of and what you would like to see less of. And um, I'll continue to upload one, one episode a day of this uh, Let's Play series. Strength and Honor.